And uh, this one's kind of a fun little example that I've got here. I found some code online that emulates the slide to unlock screen on our iPads and our iPhones, or at least currently this is what it looks like. And uh, I thought it would be fun to have this pop up. We could put this into a modular window. Uh, possibly if users um, have timed out, you can run an on timer script, for example, that would open this up, not allow users to get beyond this screen unless they slid uh, the lock. So just kind of a way to get the user's attention and um, you know manage their idle time a little bit. And really just sort of a kind of a wacky fun example here to show you guys something. So I've got this um, slide to unlock uh, screen as you see here, this window on, on screen. And so what I'm going to do is just use either my finger on the iPad or my uh, cursor here on the desktop and I'm going to slide and unlock it. So what it did is it closed uh, the window that was up in front of it and then revealed this window that you see behind. And really what was actually happening there in the background is that I'm running just this script. Pretty simple script, closes the window, um, determines what uh, client the user's on, and uh, in this case I was on Pro, so it goes to a layout called Event Details and resizes to fit. So pretty simple idea there, and the, the basis behind this is that I've got a layout in my database here that you'll see that's called slide lock and all it is is a web viewer and the web viewer points to this field called slide to unlock HTML calc. If you take a look at that, that calculation down here at the very bottom, I'll zoom this up for you. So you see that it, um, it's just got some uh, style sheet references, three JavaScript references, and uh, these JavaScript references and style sheet references are actually uh, coming from uh, global values, global variable values that I'm setting when the file opens up. So where do, where do these come from? Well, like in other examples that I've shown you, uh, these come from a table that I've created in the database that's called resources. If I go down to resources slider, I can show you that I've created a field in the database for all four of the referenced files. So I've got the CSS here, the JavaScript UI min and jQuery min here, those are the JavaScript ones, and then the JavaScript that's unique to this application is what I've got here. And I got these by just trolling around the web, found some free uh, code that was up there, and um, here's what the HTML looks like. And for those of you that are accessing this off of the iSolutions website, um, you'll see uh, this code embedded in the posting. But it's really simple in this case because uh, the the JavaScript and the CSS is doing all the work here. So um, so really, it's just a simple HTML and my HTML calc that I've created has to output this value and then reference instead of this fully formatted uh, web hosted JavaScript I'm just saving the contents of that JavaScript file into those fields that I showed you earlier this way this thing can work offline or just locally on your iPad and quite frankly it doesn't have to be connected to the web so why bother having it connected to the web and instead of actually referencing all the code that I put into these fields Instead, I write these to application memory when the file opens up. As you can see, when I go into Data Viewer, and you look at current, and you see that this file has quite a bit of uh, JavaScript references. Um, and the four that are referenced in this example are all found here. So I just grab those from the field, write them when I open it up. Now I'm using FileMaker's application memory rather than having to push all this data back and forth. And I've got it just kind of floating there in application memory for me to be able to access in my calculation engine. So the trick here in this example, the one that I wanted to show you here, is that um, you'll notice that there's a some JavaScript code here called uh, to unlock .js. And I renamed that here slide to unlock .js, but it's the same code. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to give you an idea of what's going on here. It's not a lot. 
Um, I'm using the draggable code that I've used in previous examples. And, uh, and by the way, if you want to check out where I got this from, you can see here, evanblack.com blog forward slash touch to slide to lock. And then there, the slider um, has its own function here. And down here at the bottom, you'll see another function that is written to basically just allow uh, some kind of the visual effects and then the sliding of the lock. But what I did is went in here and made a modification. So you'll notice here's the original one. And right above where the slider function comes in and right below where the original one is, I've amended the stop. So the stop function in this case is, uh, is describing what happens or if anything happens um, when I get to the position to the left if it's any greater than 551 pixels. Basically it means if I've moved that little air or that uh, arrow icon or image all the way across the side of the screen. Once I get there then I am doing this familiar function here that I've talked about in previous videos, the window.location, which in uh, FileMaker world is like the open URL script step. But in JavaScript, what it does is runs a URL. And you see, you see here what I've done is I'm running a script that just goes and finds this hosted file, in particular a file called project management at this IP address, and I run a script that's called trigger slide lock window close. That's the script that I showed you earlier. So really what I've done is I've taken the original code and appended it with this window.location inside the function, the stop function in the JavaScript, which simply means when I stop moving the arrow, let's go in here and take a look at it again. There's slide lock. When I stop moving the arrow, or when the arrow gets to this position over here, then run the script. And curiously, if we open up our script debugger, we've got script debugger open here. I'm going to go ahead and slide. And you're actually going to see that a script is running. And this is important, too, because not only is this script running, but it runs just like any other script that I would have triggered within this session. So other users that are logged into this file are not going to get their sessions interrupted. Um, I have to take into account things like context and, and my user account and my privileges and all that kind of stuff that you already know about scripts. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting that I wanted to share with you here is there is a uh, this arrow and actually these highlight images the arrow and the highlight are really part of this little highlight is what moves across the screen and provides that sort of gleam effect. So um, if I really want to fully localize this solution, which I've been a proponent of, um, there was a down on the bottom, let me just scroll down here, sorry for the seasickness. Down here at background, there used to be a URL that pointed to the image. So I would have had to store that image somewhere on a server and point to that. So this, this whole solution isn't going to work if I'm not connected to the web. And as you've seen the theme here, that's uh, not something that um, I think you should have to develop around. So what I instead did is I went and encoded the arrow as base64 text. That's what all this gobbledygook is here. And the highlight as base64 text. And then I went into the CSS and I permanently replaced the URL that points to the image with the Base64 version. And so now I can run this script. You see there's just tons of text there. I can continue to run the script anytime I want and I don't have to worry about the images not being hosted. So this is an example that I like to call slide to unlock. Just kind of a fun little example here. Um, to show you guys how this works inside of uh, FileMaker Web Viewers with the modified JavaScript, just some code that I found online, and um, allows us to run a script that then goes and closes the window. Appreciate you guys checking out another one of these videos. All sorts of fun stuff yet to come. And uh, 
look forward to seeing you guys at DevCon where I'll be giving away a copy of this file that I just showed you here. And for those of you watching this on YouTube, uh, check out FileMakerHTML5.com where you can see the post uh, called Slide to Unlock Demo and you'll see uh, all the different code that I've used and modified uh, in line within that posting. So thanks again. This is Chris from iSolutions signing off from FileMakerHTML5.com. Thanks.